some of the critics, they say that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, knows Billah. He attributed the Quran to Almighty God because he wanted to unite the Arabs. It's known as the Arab unity and liberation theory. The various theories propounded by the critics and the Orientalists. There is not a single verse in the Quran which singles out and speaks exclusively of the Arab unity. Not a single verse. Exclusively talking about the unity or the liberation of the Arabs. The Quran has the concept of Ummah. That's the nation of the whole humankind. And the criteria for any human being to be superior to any other human being, it's not caste, it's not color, it's not wealth, it's not sex, but it is taqwa. And this is mentioned in the Quran. In Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 13, where Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaknaakum min zakin wa unsa wa jalnaakum shu'ubaw wa qaba ila li ta'arafu inna karmukum inda la yatkaakum inna la alimun khabir. O humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize one another, not that you may despise one another. And the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has taqwa. The criteria for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not caste, color, creed, sex, wealth, but it is taqwa, it is God consciousness, it's piety, it's righteousness. There are many verses in the Quran in order to stand for truthfulness. It even says, you can do that even if you have to go against your relatives. There can be a dispute between the father and son, between husband and wife, even between relatives, if you are fight for the truth. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 24, Kul in kana abaukum. Say whether it be for your fathers, wa abnaukum, or your sons, wa ikhwanukum, or your brothers, wa azwajukum, or your spouses, the wealth that you have amassed, the business in which you deal, the house in which you live. Allah says that if you love all these eight things, your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your spouses, your relatives, the business in which you deal, the house in which you live, the wealth you have amassed, Allah continues. If you love all these things more than Allah, His Rasul, and doing jihad, striving the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, فَتَرَبَّسُوا wait. حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِي وَاللَّهُ لَا يَدْلُكُمُ الْفَاسِكِينَ Wait until Allah brings His decision to you. Until Allah brings His destruction to you. And Allah guides not the fasik people. So if the Prophet wanted unity amongst the Arabs, why did he mention such a verse in the Quran? It's further mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 103. Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. So here, the Prophet is talking about the unity of the believers. He is not talking about the unity of the Arabs. And if he wanted to unite the Arabs, he could have easily taken the leadership and become the leader and the king and united the Arabs easily. There are verses in the Quran which are contrary to this theory. It's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 43. It says, وَإِسْكَالَةِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَمَرِيمُ And behold, the angel said, O Mary, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاكِ وَتَحَرَكِ that Allah has chosen thee and purified thee and purified thee above the women of all nations. Imagine the Quran says that Mary, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him, who was a Jewess, she is chosen as the woman above all the women in the world. If he wanted unity among the Arabs, he could have chosen his mother or his wife or his daughter any Arab woman as the woman above all the nations. But he goes out of the way to say 
Mother Mary, who was the mother of Jesus, please be upon him, is the woman chosen above the women of all nations. And the reason is, it's immediately mentioned in the next verse, in Surah Imran chapter 3, verse 45, that it is nothing but an inspiration from Almighty God. He has no choice. He has no choice to agree or disagree because this is a wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So surely, there are various other verses in the Quran, several times including Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 47 which says that don't you remember the favors which we have bestowed on the children of Israel, on Bani Israel. So all these verses of the Quran, if Prophet Muhammad knows Billah, he was the author of the Quran, God forbid, then why should he mention such verses in the Quran?